Christmas music. Hello, and this is Melanie Bundock's Joyful June Boot Camp. And here today with me is the delightful Sandy Newbegin, who um, I first met on Sandy's New Year retreat, not New Year just gone, the one before. A brilliant three days in Champneys. Thoroughly recommend Sandy's retreats. And and I think, well, yeah, and we met briefly at the Hay House, um, I Can Do It, where... I got Sandy's book and he very kindly signed it for me and I wanted to talk to Sandy today about his work and and his books and his CDs but also just how um, Sandy brings kind of joy to his own life and to the lives of others um, through his meditation. So Sandy is um, a Hay House author, meditation teacher and all round lovely guy and <laughs> okay, okay 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 all right then and i'll <laughs> hand over to you so right sandy tell tell us what what do you do in your words when it comes to joy well yeah before we get to that just tell us about you first yeah yeah like yeah. like you, you interest me beautifully yeah i'm okay. best thing out there um i teach meditation for a living which is really fun you know my parents always said you know you can't make a living doing nothing <laughs> and I actually if I ended up the better I do nothing, uh, the better I am at my my job. Um, you know, meditation is is such a wonderful thing to do, and we often don't prioritize it enough. And so I feel like I'm a bit of an ambassador for meditation, uh, but modern day meditations. Um, and well, actually, I offer a, a, a range of techniques. Some are more advanced, more ancient, more mystical. Others are more mainstream and modern day. And uh, really, it, it's. Uh, I believe meditation is important as eating, sleeping, and, and drinking enough water because, you know, without uh, meditation, you're not able to be present enough to experience life. And without water, food, and, you know, sleep, we don't actually have a life because we need these things to have a, have a life. And so, really, uh, it's about prioritizing that time every single day just to stop, close your eyes, reconnect with stillness. And then engage your day from that, uh, and it's amazing what can happen when you do. Brilliant. So, when when um, did you get introduced to meditation, Sandy? And so, how did you how did you come about it? I was stressed the hill. I was highly successful. I was on TV in thirty countries and had fully booked everything, but I didn't feel successful. In fact, I felt like a, a failure and a fraud because I, uh, despite having the external success, I wasn't experiencing what I'd call a successful life, which is one that's loved. By the person living it, uh, you know. I believe that you know we're here to be happy, and we're here to be uh, making the most of our talents and 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 fulfill our purpose for being born. And I was doing stuff, but I was I didn't feel like I was on purpose. Um, and so I was around about that time. A friend of mine said to me, "Have you tried meditation?" Kind of similar to you sharing this with other people. It's like you're saying, "Hey, have you tried meditation?" Mm. And someone said that to me, and I went, "Oh, I can't meditate." And uh, they said, how do you know you can't meditate? And I was like, well, I can't stop my mind. And they're like, well, you don't have to stop your mind to experience peace when meditating. And that phrase, you don't have to stop your mind to experience peace when meditating, completely confused me. But despite being confused, I was curious. And to be honest, I didn't have anything to lose apart from a lot of stress and anxiety and loneliness. Uh, and so I went along and learned, and, and the rest is history. I went and um, meditated for six months with the monks that originally taught me. Uh, became a monk myself along the way, and uh, really dove into to the benefits of meditation. And and really, um, like I said before, you know, I, I've ended up accidentally becoming a meditation teacher, and and sharing it uh, with as many people as, as possible. Now, most, I'd say, pretty much most of the human race, unfortunately, we can't just take off six months and go and meditate. And, you know, as much as I'm sure everyone probably benefit from that. But um, how would you say that, what would be the, what would be the best introduction to meditation? You said, because that, saying that to somebody, right, this is what I did six months. Oh, yeah, right. I'm going to go off six months. Um, How would you, what's the, best way to introduce meditation into your life? I'd say that the six-month course is, appeals to probably about, you know, maybe one to, one to five percent of people that I work with. And so some people do have that calling. But I'm, I'm, most of my days spent uh, with the other 95% people who 
are looking more to find a practice that resonates with them, that they enjoy, that they can fit into an already busy schedule. Mm. And so the, the most important thing that I would say if you feel you have no time uh, or you feel you're very busy is to remember that meditation is all about the present moment. And so don't make it about the future. Don't make it about uh, how much meditation you can do this week or um, this month or this year or six months here or whatever. Uh, make it about am I accessing the meditative state right here, right now? Because the state in which meditation uh, can take you to uh, and help you rest within is accessible always uh, for anybody. Um, but we just don't know it's present within us and we don't know how to necessarily access it. So the, the best bit of advice I can say to someone like yourself, sorry, someone that you just shared, uh, like the example you gave that you can't disappear off for six months, um, is you know don't make it about six months, make it about this moment because this is the moment that matters, this is the moment you're going to wake up, this is the moment that you're going to let go of stress and access your calm and peace and uh, unconditional joy. And so... Um, don't make it about a process of the future. Make it about, you know, learn techniques that help you to engage it right here, right now. Because that's the doorway to uh, peace. It's the doorway to joy. It's called the present moment. And we've heard about that, but few people actually know how to access it. Mm. And so you want to make your priority and you want to learn a technique that is focused on helping you be present, but also helping you to cultivate an underlying uh, relationship with the inner source of silence and, and stillness. Um, why? Why do you want both ingredients when you're looking for a meditation technique? Well, some mindful techniques, for example, are, are great for being present, but they're not actually cultivating an ongoing relationship with stillness. In fact, they often promote quite a scattered attention and you're kind of jumping around trying to be mindful of everything. Um, but actually, you're wanting to have this underlying attentiveness uh, to the stillness within. Because the stillness is your natural state. The silence is your natural state. This inner presence of being, which you are, is that aspect of you that is perfect, whole, complete, and is already at peace. And it's, it's free and peaceful, irrespective of what's happening in the temporary, in the temporary mind, in the temporary thoughts and emotions and physical conditions. So wh why do you want stillness? Well, because that means you can have a more one-pointed, anchored uh, experience of peace as opposed to it being more scattered and just trying to be present all the time. So for me, like I have an ongoing inner experience of stillness as I engage this conversation. I might be talking quickly and with, you know, animation, but inwardly I'm attentive to the stillness part of my inner experience. Mm -hmm. And that's been cultivated over, first of all, discovering it with meditation, then prioritizing the, uh, having my attention on it as I go about daily life. And because you feel what you focus on, as I sit here with my attention inwardly gazing and resting upon the stillness, I feel the calmness and the completeness that comes from that. Um, but if you're like scattered and trying to find your peace on the outside, then that can be a very risky strategy and, and it often is found to be ineffective. Brilliant. Now, um, um, in a minute, hopefully at the end of this conversation, would you um, be able to lead us into like a mini meditation just to kind of, just to... Okay, so before we come to that, just want to kind of talk about your your books. Now, when I came to the retreat, we did, I think, the Mind Calm, because Body Calm hadn't been released at the time. So for me, I was just, because I've done quite a lot of meditation, um, lots of different types of meditation, and um, I've done chanting, I've, you know, been on retreats, and, and I love it, and I love all the different forms. But when I came to your one, I was... The thing I was uh, most surprised about was the simplicity of it. And then the, the, to the point where actually I came back from the treat and I shared the um, gao. Is that how do you say it? Gao. Gao. I can't say it. Gao. Gao. That's it. Um, gently alert, tension wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll come to that in a minute. You can come to that in a minute. And, and it was just such an easy technique to share with people. And they were like, wow, this is so easy. And I don't think there's been a meditation technique where you can literally just, as you say, wherever you are, just do it there and then. And, um, you know, the kids could be driving me up the wall and I can just switch off and it's great. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I'd love you to share that in a minute. But since um, we met, um, you then release your latest book, which is Body Calm. So I'd love to just hear you explain a little bit more about the, um, the mind-body connection and the kind of the healing. And um, if you could just tell us 
yeah, a bit about kind of how body calm works. Yeah, Copy of it uh, right here. I have in my yay, hands. Yay, isn't that pretty? Um, the, the body calm is, uh, is, is really important. Uh, every body needs body calm, I believe, um, because, you know, go to any doctor, any health practitioner, one of the most common pieces of advice that you'll get, because it works, is to go home and get some rest. And if we go home to, you know, put our feet up, lie down or whatever, but we're still totally engaged in our mind that's moving a million miles an hour, due to the mind-body connection, the body's not going to get much respite at all. So if we want to help the body experience less stress and therefore less dis-ease, um, we're looking to increase inner harmony and inner rest in order to help the body be healthy, then it's important that we learn how to have uh, a more calm mind in order to help the body calm down too. Your body is constantly experiencing whatever you're thinking about. And so it's important to be much more aware of when you're so caught up in thinking and then be willing to let go of thinking to return to the present moment. The benefit of doing that is more energy because until we stop thinking, we don't realize how much energy is used up during the day through the form of unconscious, incessant thinking. Um, and, and also improving the communications between the mind and body. You know, often um, our, our, our body can actually be responding to our own self-fulfilling prophecies and, and our own um, nocebo effect. Uh, in other words, we've been, you know, we might have heard about the placebo effect where you take a, a fake pill and you get better because you believe that you're having the real pill. Well, you've got the nocebo effect is where if you believe you're going to get sick, you most likely will um, because it works both ways. Mm. And so we want to clear up the communications happening between the mind and body and, and be able to see the conditioning and the beliefs that we've picked up along the way that are actually causing us to get sick unnecessarily. Um, you know, I used to get um, uh, colds and, and flus all, all the time until I realized and read some research that said that it was impossible to catch one. And the minute I realized that, and it, the evidence was very felt very true to me. I've not caught a cold ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just an example. You know, what often we're told that we're going to gain weight the older we get. Well, that's actually a society cultural based uh, belief that we're conditioned to believe and then the body creates that. So we want to we want to clean up the communications happening between the mind and body. Mm. And in doing that, we also want to heal uh, the belief system that would is sitting in the background, which is justifying us to, well, basically the belief system is justifying how we react and how we respond to external stimulus and what's happening in our life. And so if we want to... Um, help our body heal, then, then we want a meditation technique that's going to A, help it disengage the fight, flight, fear response and relax properly. Uh, B, we want to um, have a technique that's going to help to clean up the communications between the mind and body. And then finally, we want to have a, a technique that's actually going to help us to heal our belief system so that, yes, we can meditate a couple times a day, but we also don't want to then spend the rest of the time stressed out. Mm -hmm. We want to meditate and then also be cultivating a healthier mindset so that we don't react to life in such a stressful way. So body calm is about um, is a meditation technique, but it's also about helping us to to clear the conflict that we have inside us that's creating the dis ease. It's the conflict that's creating the stress. You know, often people think that stress is the culprit, but stress is a symptom too. And so body calm is about helping us to recognize that actually underlying the stress, underlying the negative emotions, underlying the problems in our life that we think are making us unhealthy or whatever, actually is an inner conflict with our mind, the conflict with our emotions, conflict with what's happening in our life. When we heal the conflict, harmony is restored. So, you know, in its simplest term, I believe that we can heal anything uh, within reason uh, by bringing calm to where there's previously been conflict. Mm. And you say kind of um, within reason, so obviously the people out there with quite severe health challenges, um, would you say that um, these meditation techniques can help people with more severe health challenges? I believe it can, and I've had received feedback about that, but I just have to be uh, of course. Uh, legally, uh, I have to put my little disclaimer in there. But what I see personally is, 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 is I, if I'm willing uh, and open-minded uh, to help anyone that comes my way, then it's amazing that they can be helped uh, mm -hmm. very effectively. You know, I was talking to a lady this morning. When I met her last year, um, she was uh, on... Um, Actually, she did the online course before me even meeting her, um, and she had had a stroke 15 years prior. She'd been on 90 milli up to 90 milligrams of morphine every day. She'd had, uh, can, had terrible issues going on. Uh, when I met her two or three months after she'd watched the online body cam course, uh, she came to Turkey 
uh, one of the retreats I run there. Um, and uh, she said, I, one of the reasons I've come is just to meet you because, to be honest, uh, I'm no longer on morphine after wow. having been on it for 15 years. Uh, and I was told that the next uh, medical intervention that was going to have to be deep brain stimulation, which had Gosh. some serious risk attached to it. And so she's now off morphine. Now, so I believe that you know you can you can like I say you can heal almost anything by bringing calm to where there's been conflict. Yeah. She needed to resolve the conflict she had uh, previously in her life and also around the actual uh, stroke that she had. And and when she did that, that she the pain. Uh, was reduced to the level where she didn't need um, morphine. So that's an example of you know some severe a severe case that can actually be helped with this. But I I have to do the legal disclaimer. Of so that's why I say within reason. Yeah. Um, then um, you know I, I think we all need to be remain open minded and and recognize that we're much more powerful than we may have been led to believe. And and um, it's really it's amazing what's possible when we get out of the way and we align with uh, the true healing power that exists within us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, something similar I do with my children is um, I never subscribe, you know, very often you, you know, if there's a sick bug or something going around at school, you know, I'm not saying they're not contagious. I don't know enough about it, but I do believe actually that you can protect yourself against these things. And I say to my kids, yes, everyone else may be sick, but you two won't. Um, you are, you know, you two are immune. So, and it's funny because being their mum, they kind of believe me. And, and do you know what? They have been ill before, but very, very rarely. You know, my daughter's had two years of 100% attendance record at school and, and they just don't get everything else that's going. And I believe it's because they believe me when I tell them that they're immune. So, um, yeah. yeah. So um, now with so this boot camp thing I'm running in June is all about kind of cultivating joy. Now, joy is ultimately the, the emotion that, you know, we, we want to as human beings to experience, um, you know, as often as possible. And, um, but very often are these factors that come in that stop us from being joyful. And I was wondering if, you know, there is a technique that you could share, um, that would enable us to kind of be more joyful, just to kind of, you know, regardless of whatever's going on, you know, um, you know, your finances or your relationships or whatever, you know, just to enable to cultivate more joy in our lives. How, how do you bring more joy to your life, Sandy? Uh, by taking life less seriously every day. Mm. Uh, it's actually my homework from my first teacher is to take life less seriously every day. Uh, because anytime I am taking things seriously, I'm totally caught up in my own head, mm -hmm. caught up in my mind, and um, I'm missing the present moment. Joy is our natural state, uh, whether we believe that or not. Um, joy is our natural state. If you're not feeling joy right now, then you're actually talking yourself out of it by engaging in, 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 in lots of thinking about stuff that, that doesn't feel very joyful. Um, you know, joy is a natural uh, movement of energy that exists within within, within humans mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the, the hardest way to be joyful is to try to be joyful, it is to try to think yourself joyful, uh, is to try to manage, manipulate, control your circumstances so that you have the greatest chance of being joyful in the future. Um, joy is only ever accessible right here, right now and it comes from um, letting go of, of, of thinking. Mm -hmm. like a judgment which is what m most of the thinking is about and when we get into caught in the judgment we often get caught up in resistance because we judge something as a problem we don't want that and we're attached to this thing that we think we need so we can be joyful and happy and we get caught up in this conflict as opposed to just being uh, in the contentment that comes from the present moment so oops, excuse me so the one of the biggest things that we have to do in order to experience joy is to let go of trying to be joyful and in order to do that we need to let go of of thinking yourself that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what do I do to be joyful? It's an interesting question because I don't do anything to be joyful. Uh, and that's why I'm joyful. Mm. Okay. When I, am, uh, when I let go and trust and rest into this present moment, my purpose reveals itself to me. And the reason I'm mentioning purpose now is because I really feel that when you are aligned with your, your purpose for being born, naturally uh, you are living in joy. They, they go hand in hand. And so joy 
is there's two different ways of doing it. Number one, get present, let go of thinking all the time. But number two, lack of joy can also be a sign that you're kind of not on the path that you're here to, to do. And, um, and it's an invitation for you actually to check in with yourself and going, you know, what makes my heart sing? Where, where, what do I do or what have I done at some point in my life where time disappears? Uh, where I'm just fully engaged in it and, and it's no chore to, to do it. I'm, I'm thankful because my entire business is, is, has been set up now to where I'm only doing what I, brings me joy. I, I enjoy, you know, I, I, to in, enjoy, you know, the word enjoy is to live in joy. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to be looking at, you know, what do I enjoy? Now it might seem really obvious, but actually how much of our day are we doing stuff we enjoy? Because if you're spending most of your day not doing stuff you enjoy, and then you wonder why you're not feeling much joy, then there's there's a clue there. Mm. And and yes, you might not be able, you might have demands, and you might have deadlines, and you might have bills to pay. But it's amazing how much of our day we actually waste when we actually start becoming very super vigilant and we start wasting time. So I would ask you know I would want, I would invite you to explore you know what brings me joy what. And lights me up. What do I do that helps me lose time to mm. do it? And if you're, if you start doing more of that, you will get really good at that. And the more you do what you're good at, because you enjoy it, that combination of doing stuff you enjoy over a period of time makes you very good at it. And guess what? Money often comes naturally. Mm. And, and so, yes, you might not be able to quit a job tomorrow or today, and then suddenly. Uh, have only do what you enjoy tomorrow, but you can definitely start the ball rolling and start making a concerted effort to bring more of what you enjoy into your day. And what you'll find often is you'll eventually naturally be invited to do that for a living. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know that's exactly what I do with people. I kind of help people to get clear on what it is they want because very often people just aren't clear. So once that clarity comes in, it's then actually then setting that big vision for yourself. So. You know, to ask people to kind of, you know, what is your big vision? What, you know, if, you know, what does your heart really desire? You know, what, um, and I remember actually from your, I think it was your new beginnings, but, you know, your heart's highest hope. You know, what is, what is it that your heart really, really wants? And, and then once you've kind of identified that, that's it. You can kind of then give yourself permission to go for it. And then obviously then with the meditation techniques and um, with a bit of tapping or whatever tool that you, um, um, need to kind of help you along that path um yeah yeah absolutely so good i'm glad um we're speaking the same language anyway <laughs> um okay it's so important to know where your yeah. heart's nice hope yes. is and <clears throat> um and make it a priority in your life yeah yeah absolutely you know, it's, it's an act of self-love to actually prioritize your heart's highest hope mm, yeah. and and if, if if you don't feel it's possible for you or you can't do it um, or maybe you don't even know what you want. You know, often people, I don't know what I want. That's my, I, I, that's my problem is I don't know what I want. Mm -hmm. Well, what you'll often find, that person is very clear on what they don't want. Yeah. And, and if you get clear on what you don't want, then just flip it and see what you find. And you might surprise yourself. You actually do know what you want, but your just focus has been on what you don't want. And the more you focus on what you don't want, that's more of what you get. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's not like having to turn every, the, the whole you know, oil tanker around in one moment uh, but you can start to re-navigate yourself towards uh, upping the chances of, of being more naturally joyful uh, mm -hmm. in the future and so you don't have to wait for the future then you want to learn how to be present. Sounds really easy. It actually is but <laughs> we overcomplicate it by overthinking about it and as long as we're in our heads thinking about it the mind's going to come up with a million reasons why yeah. I can't be uh, joyful or do my purpose right now or um, all, all the uh, yeah, it, it can come up with so many ways of, of postponing what's only ever accessible right here and right now. Okay, so let's. How do we do it? What do we do? <laughs> well, I mean, one way of doing it is 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 uh, to engage that technique you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Gawo is the first step of of the calm meditation techniques that I um, one of the meditation techniques I share. Uh, and um, should we do that first? Or, sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. And then, and then lead straight into something else, or what? Yeah, you wanted me to do a little meditation on for joy, didn't you? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, who wouldn't want a bit more joy in their lives? So, yeah, should we do one straight into the other? What would work 
best? Um, yeah, you can you can guide me if you feel like you need a break or something, but I, or, or you know, or I need to interject. But I'll I'll just teach you the first step of calm. Okay. The second step is a calm thought, and we happen to have one that's specially designed for joy. So fabulous, you can do that. brilliant. Uh, so. Um, Gao has is a technique. It's an acronym, uh, like Mal said a moment ago, and um, it it stands for gently alert with your attention wide open. and And the most effective way to get the biggest results from this is to recognize that there's three golden rules to get the most from it. The first golden rule is that you need to be willing to play with this technique. Uh, we try to take we often take life way too seriously, and we want to perfect things instantly when the older we get but as kids we're more willing to play and explore and, and gradually get better at something but as adults we think we should master it instantly and if we haven't then we get disheartened somehow so just just be, have the attitude of playing with this the second rule is that you can't think about doing gavel for it to work it's a technique that's going to take you beyond your mind to, so, to if you're thinking about it you're going to still be in your mind mm. And so you can't think about it for it to work. So don't sit there analyzing it to see if you like the idea of it so that if you do like the idea of it, you might do it later. You probably won't do it later because you will have no experience that will encourage you to bother. And the third rule is that you can never, ever, ever do Gawa later. You can only ever, ever do it now. Mm. And so if it's ever not working for you, I guarantee it's because you're either thinking about doing it or you're planning to do it later. Uh, so that's the three rules. Now, how do you do it? Well, right now, as you're looking at this video, have me as your me and Melanie as your focus focus point, in the central focus point. And as you continue to look ahead at the screen, just let your gaze open up wider to left and right. So think about doing that. Disengage it. Start noticing what you weren't noticing before to the left and right. So now there's a bottle and there's some flowers on the table and noticing the floor, um, and then the, the door is over, overlooking into the garden. So I'm like, I'm just starting to notice. I'm still looking ahead at you. You've noticed. I'm not looking left and right. I'm just looking ahead and, and noticing um, and engaging more of what's in my peripheral vision. And as you do that already, you might notice that you're not lost in the past and future, not thinking at the moment, you're just more here. Now you notice what's below and above. Again, keep your attention straight uh, ahead, but notice what's on the left and right, up and down, sorry. And like I just accidentally said, so now bring it all together. So as you're gazing ahead, let your gaze be wide, left and right, up and down. And just start really noticing all that your eyes are already seeing. We tend to focus and have hold our attention very narrow. And when we do that, we tend to start thinking. But if you open up wider, left and right, up and down, you may notice, well, what is your inner experience like right now, Mel? It just does transport you into nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just stay in that, hanging out there, mm. left and right, up and down. And from that nothingness, there's a quietness maybe, there's a stillness, there's, mm. a, there's a calm. There might still be energy, there might still be emotion, there might still be noises happening in your environment and stuff, but you're now okay with it. Mm. There's, not like a, there's no conflict with it. Um, there's more of a peace with whatever is currently present. You'd have to leave doing Gawo to then start thinking about, oh, mm -hmm. is that feeling gone away yet? Or, oh, that person, that problem that in my life hasn't gone away. Well, right now, it isn't happening, believe it or not, as long as you're yeah. fully engaged. This video is happening right now. Yeah. Uh, and if you need to deal with something later on, that will be presented in the moment to be dealt with. But the more you get present, the more you realize that now is the moment of power and the moment where you discover presence. And how long would you typically engage in Garwo for? Every time you remember to do so. Mm, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's as simple as that. You just do it any time you remember. Mm -hmm. um, with, the, with your open eyed calm practice, it's the first step of what we call a calm moment. Uh, and you just, when you realize you've been off thinking about stuff, and you just, oh, you just engage being gently alert, tension mm -hmm. wide open. It's kind of like the reset and the engaged. You know, like, it reminds me of like the Winter Olympics. You know, when they, they're, they're sitting there with the thing at the top of the, um, you know, the, what are they called? The, the things that slide down that. Slalom. Sheet. Slalom. Yeah. And you know, when they're kind of, they're poised. Yeah. And they're like, and it goes beep, and then they go, right? It's a bit like that. You just point, you engage, and then you go. So you just sense? freak people out every so often. <laughs> and then the next step in calm is to think a calm thought. Mm. Now, it's not just any thought. We, we prescribe, you know, 10 mind calm thoughts that are targeted and help to uh, help us to cultivate a more present moment awareness. The mind calm helps us to experience more mind calm. 
but also recognizes that the great teachers have always said that you are what you seek. If you want peace, if you want love, if you want joy, you are that. Mm -hmm. And if that's not your current experience, it means that it doesn't stop you being that. It just means it's that that state of being, these states of being have become buried under all the thoughts and thinking and the distraction from the present moment. And so Mind Calm is about cultivating an inner attentiveness and an inner recognition of these inner states of being like connection, peace, love, joy, oneness or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Body Calm thoughts. There's 10 Body Calm thoughts and they're more... They, the intention behind them is more what I talked about earlier about helping disengage the fight, fight, freeze response, clean out the communications between the mind body and uh, healing the belief system. And so you have a calm thought to think, whether it's mind calm, body calm. And so after engaging Gawo, you then think a calm thought. And one of the reasons we do that is why would we think something? Well, because after a few moments of engaging Gawo, you're going to notice your mind's going to want to become active again. It's just very natural. So we're going to give it something useful to do when it does. And so we give it these calm thoughts which help to serve the purpose that I just described. Fantastic. So I'm going to suggest we use the calm thought Om Joy. Perfect. Okay. And when you, and when you think Om Joy, you have your, a little bit of your focus in your uh, navel. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And so, do you have eyes open or closed? Well, we're going to do eyes open at the moment. Okay. So as you're like listening to me right now, if I was to say put your t you know focus on your left shoulder, you'd suddenly mm -hmm. be able to not put your attention there. I said put your attention on your right foot. Suddenly you can put your attention there. You're aware of your right foot again. Now put your attention in your navel, and it just very naturally moves there. Mm. Okay, so attention follows intention. Yeah. Right. So if you have the intention uh, to move your attention, it just naturally goes. Okay. Okay. So this is how you do an open-eyed calm moment. Engage being gently alert, your tension wide open, left and right, up and down. Just take a moment. And then just let a part of your tension move to your navel and as you think, om joy. Just think or say? Just think it, think it to yourself, om joy. Don't try to feel joy, don't try to make yourself happy, don't try to, just, just think it and then once you've thought it, re-engage, being gently alert with your attention wide open. Or in other words, re-engage Gawo. Just hang out. And that will be in a much nicer moment than sitting thinking about your problems or worrying about something or getting anxious about something or reminiscing about something. It'll be much a nicer moment. And the more you do that, the more that life shows that to you. And you, you see that actually, I want to stay here much more than mm. worry about this, about that. And the more... The less you worry about that and think about that, the more life seems to work out okay and, and, um, and you're less anxious and, and have more confidence and stuff. So everything, uh, all the benefits just naturally arise from being present. Mm. So that's why, how you do a calm moment. You go about your day. I invite you guys watching this just for the rest of your day and if you enjoy it, why not try tomorrow and see how you get on uh, over the next few days. Just any time you remember, engage Gavo, think um, joy with your focus in your, in your in navel mm. and then um, re-engage Gabo get on with your day it could be a few hours pass yeah. and then remember and you just engage and just see what happens perfect so simple so so simple and really effective and it has to be it has to be simple and it has to work within the natural tendencies of the mind and, and ultimately what you'll discover with that technique is it will help you to and discover the inner presence of stillness and silence like I talked about earlier mm. Yeah, no, and I love your CD because um, we do, we go through the, with the body calm, it's kind of going through the entire body, so you feel like you're giving your whole body a bit of a, an energetic cleanse. Um, in, in my Calm Clan, which is my online membership site, where you, if you want, you can go on and learn all about mind calm and body calm, there's whole online courses are there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, the same course, that lady earlier that healed herself from the uh, yeah. stuff. So we can find um, all this at your website, can we? It's on calmclan.com. Calm Clan. Calm, calm okay. Accessible via my main website, but if you go to calmclan.com, all of there, I've got videos, guided meditations, monthly broadcasts. This month in July, June, I'm running the Stillness Summer School, which is four live broadcasts with me covering everything about stillness and stuff. Um, we, have, we meditate together. Tonight, I've got a, a calm gathering happening where everyone comes on and, and online and we all meditate together and we ask questions. And, and then, um, but... Um, why I mentioned that was because you said the body scan, and I've, there's some more guided meditations that are in the Calm Clan that aren't available anywhere else. Oh. But one of them is the um, 
body cam body part scan, which covers 25 body parts, and, it, and that takes you literally from the toes all the way up to your body, and you're thinking the cam thoughts are the antidote to any problems that tend to show up in these body parts. Mm. Your toes, your calves, your knees, your hips, all the way neck, all the way through. There's also an organ scan, body cam organ scan. Again, that takes you through all the organs of the body, and you're, you're thinking the, the cam thoughts that the antidote to why, for why the organs might become out of balance and create conditions. Yeah. So there's lots of really cool stuff in there. Absolutely. Well, I love that aspect of your book, actually, the, um, the, um, the directory at the end where there's actually, as a practitioner, when I've had people come with issues, I've had a little flick through and um, I think I had a lady with um, gallstones a while ago. And then, I thought, oh, yeah, there was something in there. And, and we, um, you know, so I gave her a little kind of, calm thought to do with it you know obviously crediting you <laughs> no worry. but like that, that is, it's really important you know and, and yeah. uh, I'm amazed you know I had an email the other day message from through Facebook I think someone contacted me saying that they've been doing the um what was it they've been doing the cam thought for some conditions and it's it's totally not been there for the last few weeks so. I mean it, it's it's it, it really this stuff really does work mm -hmm. um it does require an open mind and, you know, it's important to also consult a doctor and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it also makes sense and it's wise to take an integrated approach because we we're not just physical bodies, we're, we're physical beings. And so we've got uh, a mind and a body and, you know, uh, we've, got, we've got to make sure that we take a, a, a more integrated approach if we want to help the body heal. Absolutely. Yeah, perfect. And finally, why the um, closed eye meditation? Yes, could we do one quickly? Yeah, so it's just, we'll just use um, dry, but we'll just do the closed eye one. And I think it's important, if I'm going to teach someone this over a video like this, I want to make sure that they know how to use gal with their eyes closed. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. And what I'd say is if you're just starting out, um, before you pop onto the calm plan and, and get the proper, the full on, you know, more teaching there, um, is, is to not worry too much about the wide open bit when it comes to when you're first practicing. Uh, calm with your eyes closed. Uh, essentially, the trick with calm with your eyes closed is, you know, we're used to closing our eyes and fogging out, but with calm, we're closing our eyes to wake up. Mm. Closing, we're used to closing our eyes to fall asleep, but we want to actually close our eyes to wake up. Wake up spiritually, wake up more consciously, wake up in awareness. So for that, you're wanting to um, close your eyes but remain gently alert without any effort, straining or trying. So just try that now. Just let your eyelids close. But it's almost like you're still looking ahead. Now make sure your forehead is relaxed, your eyes aren't straining. Just maintain that attentiveness um, ahead whilst having your eyes closed. And so you're still, you're meaning gently alert, but your eyes are closed. And you're just watching, you're just aware. There may be thoughts, there may be emotions present, there may be sounds happening, but you're just aware and alert to it all happening. And that's how you start your, your closed eye calm sitting. You just hang out gently alert. And now, with your focus in your navel, think on joy. And then having thought it, just re-engage, being gently alert. And just hang out for a little while. And then after a while, you might notice that you've been off thinking. You've not been present anymore. You've not really been aware that you've been meditating. You've just been off in your mind, lost in the story about the past or future, or even thinking about the meditation to any itself. And when you realize you've been thinking, you just want to re-engage being gently alert. And then with your focus in your navel, think on Joy. 
Don't try to feel joy. Don't push away any other emotion. Just think it. And then having thought on joy, continue being gently alert. Again, you might notice you've been off thinking. And when you do, one last time for now, just engage being gently alert. One last time, just with your focus in your navel, think om joy. Having thought it, continue by being gently alert. And because this is where we're closing and ending this cam sitting, just gently and slowly open the eyes. Lovely. Very easy. Very now, easy. Now, there's a number of cam thoughts. They all have different focus points, and you'll learn them. So it's not always the navel. It might be your solar plexus or your heart or your or your feet, or whatever. So there's different focus points, um, depending on the calm thoughts. And, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, so I've got the book and, um, and the CD. You can get CD as well. CD. Um, and, yeah, just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, too. Um, and it's so easy. As I said, you know, of all the kind of meditation techniques, this really is just, you couldn't really have to think about it. Um, it's just, yeah. It's very natural, you'll find. Mm. Uh, it, it, and... It does really, if you use it, you know, most people that have learned the complete technique through the Calm Clan or through attending a live event or whatever, um, they tend to do like uh, 10, 15 minutes in the morning. Mm. And then they, because they want to, they tend to do another uh, Calm sitting 10, 15 minutes before dinner. And then they tend to do it when they're falling asleep at night as well. Mm. Um, so instead of just lying in bed thinking, they just tend to, to lie there and, and go through their, their their calm thoughts until they just naturally drift off into a very restful sleep. So um, it's, a, it's a really nice practice. And, and just by doing it more short stints, uh, throughout, and then anytime you remember with your eyes open, it's amazing how quickly you can create a, a seamless uh, attentiveness to the present moment and, uh, and a more ongoing awareness of the inner presence of, of being in stillness. So we can find all that information at calmclan.com. Well, yeah, so okay. my main website is sandynewbeing.com. Okay. And um, you can find information about the, um, the CAM clan there. The first month's free, and then it's like a small monthly fee, just more for your commitment, so you make sure you actually come back and you keep engaging the live events and things. Um, so, but the first month's free, so you can basically learn the whole thing for free and then decide after your month if you want to continue or not. I'm sure, I'm um, sure we will, yeah. <laughs> and then um, there's also information about my CAM Academy on the website. Because I teach CAM coaches, people to build. So everything I've shared today, I hear people how to pass this on to their, uh, you know, coaches and their friends and family and stuff. Um, so that's the coach trainings um, are, are all about that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, and I hope everyone has just discovered a new little addition to your um, joyful um, toolbox, toolkit, um, something else to add to the box. Can't have enough things, but yeah, thank you so much, Sandy. I really, really appreciate it. And um, thanks for this invitation to share. And and my, I guess I just invite everyone to keep calm and carry on. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs>